Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and this is part three of my experimental iFlight based freestyle copter build based around the iFlight all-in-one KISS Flyduino licensed flight controller and also their iPika ESCs and today I'm going to be flashing and setting up KISS on screen display and I'm going to be using this board. However, this video might be useful as well if you also have a KISS V1 board because essentially this little controller board that they give you in the package becomes an FTDI adapter when you remove this boot short here. And I've actually done this before so you can add this to the KISS V1. So yeah, if we look at the KISS V1 it is around about the same price as this board, but it does not have a power distribution board. It doesn't have a built-in on-screen display. So that is why I thought that this was a nice idea, because it's putting things together that KISS hasn't managed to do. But yes, you can buy a Micro Minim on-screen display and get an FTDI adapter, and I made a video on how to do that and if you have this set up then you are going to be able to flash KISS on screen display the same way that I'm going to be doing in this video. Now the drivers that I'm going to be using and are already installed are the VCP virtual COM port drivers and I also have the drivers installed that come with Betaflight. So that's everything I've got installed and it seems to work. So, the other thing that you are going to need, of course, is KISS on screen display and you get that from GitHub. And I'll link to this in the below. So, we've got the Steel PDB and KISS on screen display for Micro Minim on screen display, but that's basically what is built into this all-in-one flight controller. So I'm going to be downloading KISS on screen display version 2.51 and if I go back to the picture here, the way that I've got it set up is that it's plugged into the flight controller like this. So we've got the JST connector going into here and I've got the boot short unplugged and then when you unzip KISS on screen display you get XLoader and the first thing that we need to do is flash the configuration file so if I go to the folder and locate where that KISS on screen display is I'm using Windows here so I'm going to select Windows and then XLoader so if I just open up X loader. So that's what it looks like here. And it's recognized the COM port, so COM3. Now I found this to be important. You need the board rate or baud rate at 57600 and the device you want that selected. So then what you need to do is click on this tab here and then we need to select the config hex file. So yeah, <laughs> the S in KISS stands for simple, but I think this wasn't really their idea to have an on-screen display. I know a lot of people who fly KISS don't use an on-screen display and just use the telemetry back to the transmitter, so maybe it wasn't designed for this, but yes, there's a configuration file that we have to flash. We then configure that on-screen display through the copter, and then once it's configured, we then flash the actual on-screen display, and we can do things like change smart audio and all sorts of settings, which I will take you through. But I need to select the config file first, so press open and then upload, and it'll say uploading. It does take some time to do, but it should say completed at the bottom here. And once it's done that, then it's over to the copter. We'll be plugging the battery in, and then we'll be also looking through the goggles 
and we'll be using the transmitter to go through the settings. You can see there it says bytes uploaded, so the config file has loaded and it's ready to be configured. Okay, so once the battery is plugged into the copter and you have put your goggles on or you are looking at it through a monitor, you will be presented with this screen. The first thing that you want to do is update the font because when I first received this, I could see through the camera but there was a black area all around this section here. Now I've already done that so I don't want to do it again but in order to control things it is the pitch to move up and down and then it is the roll to the right to go into that option. So the first one is display and the first option we've got is reduce items. So this on-screen display is very capable but it can also mean that the screen can get cluttered if you have selected too many things so what you can actually do is on an aux channel have some of the items reduced however I like mine fixed so the next one is RSSI and if you will remember from the previous part I mentioned that you need to take note of the max PPM value of the RSSI and it was around about 1800 and then when I turned it off it was around about a thousand it was different every time and it's a little bit temperamental and also we've got the RSSI aux channel which I mentioned also I think in part one so it only goes up to aux 4 so if you are using an XM Plus, then you're going to want to flash the firmware with the RSSI on channel 8. So then if we go back, we can change the temperature unit from Fahrenheit to Celsius. I'm going to keep it Celsius. We can also change the font size from large to normal. And then icons. Now, this is something that took me a while to get my head around. So, these are the icons that appear before what the information is telling you. So, for example, if you are looking at your battery voltage, then it will have a picture of a battery before the actual figure. So, I didn't really like that. So, I've got icons turned on but only for the KISS logo and also the RSSI icon because I quite like the icon and as soon as the RSSI is a little bit temperamental on this XM Plus anyways the icon sort of disguises that a bit more if you have this off then it shows it in DB and sometimes it can go over 100 DB and low of course as well but if you have the icon then you don't get it in db you get it as sort of like a meter so i kind of like that so i've got that turned on but all of the rest really clutters everything up so i've got most of those off so if we go back so goggle here so we've got the option for fat shark and head play but really i think that is just the difference between pal and ntsc what meter I've got turned off and cross hair I've got turned off because those are really annoying statistics I've got on though so if that is when you disarm it'll give you some statistics and seeing as we have got telemetry all hooked up here that could be a useful thing so if I go back so that was just display we've got call sign in there so it says use pitch roll to set the name your left to exit so I actually don't want a call sign so I'm going to exit out of there and then move items so this is how I have got it set up so yeah the roll actually moves the item and the pitch moves it up and down but the your I think if you hold it it should go to the next one so it's your to the left there you go so that's just moved over 
there so you can see I can go through all of the different ones there and you can see the RSSI icon in the middle at the top there so yeah these are the items that I've selected so I thought temperature would be a good one for the ESCs you can have the ERPM but I don't find that very useful and it clutters everything up and you have to calculate it depending on the number of poles of your motor etc so I don't find that information useful however if you can see one of your ESCs is overheating then you can come in and land and maybe prevent a crash or something like that so you can see there we've got the timer as well and that activates when you arm and then to get out of that it is a long press, let's press the right word, of the yaw. So that's move items. So center OSD really all that does is you can just move it slightly to the left or the right. So. That one's quite simple. And then set items. So really this should be before where the items are positioned. But you can see I've got call sign off. I've got timer on. Then throttle I've got off because I find it annoying. But amps I've got on because I think that is useful. And obviously voltage. And then milliamp hour as well very useful for when testing batteries. ESC RPM as I mentioned turned off because not helpful and then ESC amp so that's the individual amp draw of the ESC. I guess you could maybe take some value out of that but it's gonna clutter up the screen so I've got that off and then ESC temp on and RSSI is on so then if I go back so battery. So in this menu we can actually select the battery and we can also select different sizes of batteries so if I use the roll to the right then you can see it says battery 2, battery 3 and it goes up to 4 and then with the pitch you can change the milliamp so it will give you a warning. The thing is though I don't use this because I find things flashing on the screen annoying so if I just go back I've got the battery warning off anyways and the battery alarm even though it's set at 25 percent I've got it all off for the warnings and minimum voltage again it isn't going to make a difference because the warnings are off but if you want that then the option is there I did have to correct the voltage but just by 0.2 and the watt meter we have got options there as well but I'm not using that so if we go back so we've got MISC so VTX so we can do max VTX power so you want to make sure that that is set at what your VTX is capable of doing and then RC split I've got set as off I believe that's something to do with the run cam split but I haven't got a split connected to this copter and I haven't explored that option so I'm not quite sure what that does but then we want to save all of those settings and once you have done that we unplug the battery to the copter and it's back to the computer to flash the actual on-screen display firmware so back on the computer and I've got everything connected up again like this as before only this time in X loader what we do is we select the KISS OSD version 2.51 hex file and then press open and then upload and it's going to do exactly the same thing only this time it's going to apply those settings to the on-screen display we will also have other settings that we can change in the on-screen display like I say small audio and things like that there you go it has uploaded so it's back over to the copter 
and I'll show you how the on-screen display works. So this time with the battery plugged in, you can see that we've got the icons on the screen now. So we've got the battery voltage at the bottom and then the various current information and then the temperature of the ESCs. And it says Kiss D-Shot in the middle there. And you can see my RSSI meter at the top jumping about. And I imagine if I move the transmitter around or put it close to the copter it may even lose signal because that's what it does but anyways to get into the settings it is throttle in the middle and then you hold the yaw to the left for a couple of seconds and then we can use the aileron or the roll to the right and we can go into the various tuning options and we can change the PIDs, the TPA, pretty much everything, rates we can do, and even the filters we can change and set, and battery, so yeah, we actually have got some of the settings that are in the configuration file, just not quite as many, so if we go into VTX, this time you can see power disarmed, 25 milliwatt, and power armed, 600 milliwatt. Make sure that that is what it is matching in the KISS GUI, which was in part 2. And then you can change your band and your channel. And that's all working with this flight controller. So, icons on or off. So, this will actually just turn off the icon that I have got selected for example the RSSI so it's not going to turn off the icons completely as in all of the information it is just going to turn on the icons that I selected in the configuration file and I want to keep that on as I say because otherwise it recognizes it in DB so I'm keeping that on so timer mode I've just got as auto cross hair off and then we can save and exit or cancel so if I arm it now and give it a little bit of throttle see we're getting a tiny bit of noise there but it is very low light and we are indoors and then disarm, then we have our stats. And we've got six pages of stats, actually. So if I take the yaw, I think, and also the pitch into the left corner. Uh, yeah, it's the bottom corner. So pitch down. So we've got six different pages there. And then to go back its pitch upwards. So yeah, that is everything. So that concludes part three of this series and all is left to do now is the flight with part four. So I'll see you then. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.